England gives rise to posting of the color of salt. Good afternoon and thank you all for coming out today. Today we are assembled to pay a well-earned tribute of respect to our compatriot and to your loved one. John George Hughes was born July 15, 1944 in California, and his character was formed in a home and family protected by the liberty he would eventually be called to defend when he entered the United States Navy. It was during the season of service that his character would be fired, tested, and tempered. But when that call to service came, he forgot self and responded to the cause and the call of the greater good. So with character and bravery greater than self, John thought of others and marched away with an abiding faith in God, country, and flag. A flag whose red was made redder by his heroism, whose white was made even more stainless and pure by the motives which impelled him, and the blue of our nation's glorious banner was made even bluer by the service he has given for our American ideals and the Constitution that promotes and protects those ideals. Shall we pray? Our great and glorious God, whose own beautiful example of self-sacrifice is still being emulated by our men and women in uniform today. So today, as we thank you for your sacrifice, we pray for their safety and for your blessings to be upon them. We ask for your peace for their loved ones at home as we pray for your peace for the family of John Hughes today. Father, we bring this time of remembrance and honor under your watchful eyes that we, being led by your guidance, may truly honor this man for his service to our country. We also pray that, guided by you, this time of remembrance will respectfully honor his life and bring comfort and peace to those he has left behind. Heavenly Father, we beseech thee to honor our sacrifices as we desire to honor his. It is in your hallowed name we pray. Amen. Today, it's our desire to honor the memory of one who willingly and selflessly offered his service and even his life in the protection of his loved ones at home and to
to support and to defend our democracy. So we have gathered here in this hallowed place to remember a life lived well in service to nation and to others. <coughs> John joined the ranks of the United States Navy and served honorably from 1962 until October of 1982, earning the rank of E-7 Chief. He was awarded the National Defense Service Medal, the Vietnam Service Medal, the Vietnam Campaign Medal with the Battle E, Sea Service Deployment Ribbon, Combat Action Ribbon, and the Good Conduct Medal. He served during the Vietnam War. It's by this example of self-sacrifice alone that this time of final honors has been earned. And it's our desire that this ceremony reflect the unending gratitude of our nation for his service. We of the Nevada Veterans Coalition feel honored to set aside this time to remember John's service in time of war and in time of peace. Today is the day that has been set apart to remember a life given in service to others. So today we gratefully look back across the years to the day this patriot left his home and his family to serve and defend others, nation, and his flag. Motivated by a spirit of devotion and inspired by undying love, John gladly went forward with his fellow patriots, proudly following in the traditions of those Marines, sailors, soldiers, airmen, and guardsmen who went before him, continuing their long line of preserving our heritage of freedom while promoting liberty and democracy to the oppressed around the world. We trust that this example of service to God, to country, to his family, set forth by this departed patriot will continue to inspire others. And we pray that his life will be an inspiration to all who are called upon to uphold the honor of our flag and the heritage of this nation. As time proceeds, we too shall finish our fights and we will each enter into our well-earned rest. Soul after soul, we shall follow this man, this veteran, this patriot into the eternity beyond. So with his life as an example, I challenge each of us to live in such a way that when our time comes, others will say of us what we say of him today. He was a defender of freedom, country, and flag, but he was also someone who loved well and was well loved. He was a defender of freedom and a lover of family whose deeds shall live forever in our hearts as his spirit now rests in the arms of his God. May we so live that we may hear, as this departed patriot has already heard. Well done, good and faithful patriot. Enter into your well-earned rest, shall we pray. Father of all, in addition to our offerings, today we pray your comfort, love, and gratitude be poured out upon the friends and loved ones assembled here. Today we pray that which is of earth is returned to earth and that we are never allowed to forget the spirit that lives forever in our hearts, now lives forever with you. May we never forget the life you lived while here and may those memories warm and fill hearts until it is our time to depart, to be reunited one with all. Father, we seek your continued blessings for all assembled here today as we come as one in our prayers. It is in your most blessed name we pray, amen and amen. <laughs>
detail. Prepared by our Queen Mother. This time I would like to invite all the veterans in the audience to please stand with us and render a proper hand salute during taps as a Thank final you, tribute please to your friend and loved one. The first fold of our flag is a symbol of life. The second fold is a symbol of our belief in the eternal life. The third fold is made in honor and remembrance of this veteran departing our ranks who gave a portion of his life for the defense of our country to attain peace throughout the world. The fourth fold represents our weaker nature, for as American citizens trusting in God, it is to him we turn in times of peace as well as in times of war for his divine guidance. The fifth fold is a tribute to our country, for in the words of Stephen Decatur, our country in dealing with other countries may she always be right, but she's still our country, right or wrong. The sixth fold is where our hearts lie. It is with our hearts that we pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. The seventh fold is a tribute to the armed forces, for it is through the armed forces that we protect our country and our flag against all enemies, whether they be found within or without the boundaries of our republic. 
The eighth fold is a tribute to the one who entered into the valley of the shadow of death, that we might see the light of day. The ninth fold is a tribute to womanhood, for it has been through their faith, love, loyalty, and devotion that the character of the men and women who have made this country great has been molded. The tenth fold is a tribute to Father, for he too has given his sons and daughters for the defense of our country. The eleventh fold in the eyes of a Hebrew citizen represents the lower portion of the seal of King David and King Solomon and glorifies in their eyes the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The twelfth fold in the eyes of a Christian citizen represents an emblem of eternity and glorifies in their eyes God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. After the thirteenth and final fold, the stars are uppermost, reminding us of our nation's motto, in God we trust. After the flag is completely folded and tucked in, it takes on the appearance of a cocked hat, ever reminding us of the soldiers who served under General George Washington and the sailors and Marines who served under Captain John Paul Jones, who were followed by their comrades and shipmates in the armed forces of the United States, preserving for us the rights, privileges, and freedoms that we all enjoy today. Three spent cartridges being added to this flag are a reminder of the volley of three fired in John's honor today. Detail by face forward mark. 
The honored ones will return in just a moment to serve as escorts to the gravesite where we will have our final prayer. Since the early days of seafaring, it's been a tradition that when a sailor is transferred to another ship or command, that they are piped to the side. Today, Chief John Hughes is being transferred to the Superior Command. Present arms. Order arms. Order guard about base. It's best for escort.
I promised her I'd be here. Promise is promise. Honor Guard and all veterans present arms. Guard Ted Hunt, left base, forward march. 